Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Deck Builder here with this week's episode of the Market Monday. Yes, I know it's Sunday, but I thought I'd get this out a little bit early because the information in here I think is critical if you are going to buy the cards that performed well at Worlds 2024. So Worlds just finished and we had a lot of powerful cards dominate the format that I still think are underpriced. There's one card in here that's already spiked up. Uh, I still think there's a lot of room for it because it just was by far the dominant card in the format. Without further ado, let's start off with my number 10. So my number 10 is going to be the Thunder Trap Trainer. This had a cool showing in a Teamer Spells deck. I don't know what you want to call it, where you can chain off a lot of spells and this is also a card that does see play in Pioneer and in Modern. So I think that getting the particularly the bundles is where you want to be with the Thunder Trap Trainer. So there's a, a big spread between the bundle foil and the rest of the cards. So normal versions is, is going for a dollar and the bundle is still going for around 40 cents. So typically speaking, bundle promos can go up and they oftentimes are a card that is buy listable from places like Card Kingdom. So this is typically my strategy with cards that are under $2 is to try to see if they spike up and then buy list them. And if you can make a good spread there, if you can make a quarter per card, but you can sell hundreds of them to the buy list. That's typically where you want to go. If you have the other outlets to sell these in like play sets, this is something that I think is a worthwhile spec as well as I mentioned this is a card, as you can see, does see play in different modern decks as I've seen it in a Pioneer shell before. And it seems to be all over the place in modern. And it's actually quite powerful in commander. So it's neat, neat to see that it has found a home in standard. And it did have decent camera time. The deck was interesting enough. There wasn't a lot of people on this for this deck. And now I'm starting to see it in arena a lot after just playing just right after a, you know day one and day two of Worlds. So Thunder Trap Trainer bundles the one I would particularly target. On to my number nine. Number nine is going to be a rock face village. I've called this one before. So if you watch the rogue market, I have a channel called the rogue market. I should actually link it. I'll have to link it in a pinned comment. I do a lot of these top 10 videos and I did one for cards that were undervalued in Bloomboro. This one is still undervalued. Rock face village sees a ton of play in various standard commander and even pioneer decks. Uh, so any card that has double dipping, like in the Rakdos Prowess Pioneer Shell, and now it is in most of these, these red decks have realized that Rockface Village is worthwhile putting at least a few copies, but where this one really shine, sh shine shone, <laughs> where this one uh, had the best performance was in the mono red aggro shell. So one of the decks in the top eight wasn't even trying to go prowess. It wasn't, or heroic or whatever you want to call that shell. It was just running a ton of one drops and the Rockface Village and the uh, mouse that when you target it triggers off of Rockface Village, but it just gave all of the one drops the haste effect. And so it was more of like a typical sly or burn shell. So that was interesting that all the Gruel Prowess decks did okay. They had a little bit above 50% win percentage, I think, is when the when the data will come out. It performed above average, but there were so many people on prowess and did any i don't think even any made in to the top eight there was just the red the one mono red shell that was tried to attack the meta differently than the prowess shell so i think that this deck didn't care about getting targeted by doom blades and cut downs and elsa smites and things because you are basically trading mana one drop for a one drop or if that ultimate price would be one drop for a two drop and Rockface village was a key card in this deck because then it made all of the one drops have haste and oftentimes turn them in, into, you know, three power or two damage going through. And then you can get the rest of the damage through with things like shock and lightning strike. And I wouldn't be surprised if people keep trying this shell out. We have some four damage spells in standard at the moment that are very under cost. And yeah, I think that there's this, this might change the way the aggro decks are built after its performance because everyone was so prepared for prowess that like the Bor boros heroic or the boros prowess or uh the uh gruel prowesses they were just getting hated on by the demir and golgari however this particular version of it, it it attacked it a lot different and i think that the golgari and the demir decks will have to build a bit differently to actually combat this this is a typical deck that gets beat by like life gain and, and stabilization uh not by completely getting blown out by getting two for one with like an ultimate price or a cut down so anyway, rock face village though i've i like this card because these these particular cards the more Lizards, mice, otter, raccoons get printed in 
changelings get printed in uh, Magic, the better and better and better this card gets. Yes, there is a, a highly likelihood this gets reprinted in a commander deck if, if there is any sort of theme base with Blizzard, Mice, Otter, whatever. However, look at the sales data for this card. It has 17 sold per day. And if we actually click on it, I mean, we're into pages just sold today. Someone bought out 65 of them. So I think someone else is on the same page that I am. Uh, this is just an undervalued card. Uncommons can easily go up in the $1 to $2 range in this modern era of standard where we have collector boosters, so not a lot of play boosters or uncommons get... Uh, entering in because a lot of the money's on collector boosters and so it brings in a lot more rares uh percentage wise and that's why we're seeing like this era of commons and commons being able to crack that one to two two dollar threshold that they used to be just very few of them could ever hit that so i do like Rockface village it's, it's my uncommon pick for this top 10 list on to my number eight. My number eight is going to be the Hati Dijin. Now, this one did get a reprint in Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander. This is the particular one that's the cheapest version of it. And it is going to be the one of the only cards, I believe, that rotates on this list. So most of the cards that I have, I'm looking over at all of them stick around for an entire rotation. And we do know that the RCQ season is going to be very focused on standard for the next few RCQ seasons. And there are going to be a lot of other big tournaments that are going to be standard. It looks like uh, Magic is going to be pushing standard. So a card that's rotating into the Pioneer format, I do think that this deck does have legs in Pioneer. You can actually run this exact same shell. And it's very similar to um, a few other decks like uh, uh, the... Uh, vehicles deck. I mean, it, it, the, the Oculus uh, shell with the, the Hadi Dijin, I think, is, is as powerful as you can get right now in standard. And it actually had one of the better win percentages for the worlds. So even though it didn't hit any of them get into the top eight, they did have a lot of six and twos. And the deck was just doing very well the entire, the entire night. So Hadi Dijin is... A card that I think is undervalued based upon the amount of... It's a pretty cheap deck other than Oculus to get in on because most of the cards are commons and uncommons. They're spells in the deck. And so the I think the Hadi Dijin is going to have a place uh, in Pioneer for a while, in Standard for a while for this type of shell. And who knows? There could be a, a few other cards that get printed in the next few sets that even makes this card even better, like even, maybe a, a better reanimation or loot type effect. Uh, if we get back, what does it consider? Or we get back, what is the just anything that like draw and loot uh, type card? Then this actually becomes even more consistent turn to a uh, reanimation spell. So anyway, uh, I think Hadi Jin is undervalued at the moment. It has spiked up recently. And there are, of course, many, many copies sold today. This is funny. There's only 47 copies left on TC Player for uh, this Commander version. However, there is a lot of the non-commander version with Dominaria. Um, I'm not actually sure which one's better. This one's cheaper, but when people in standard, just the mentality of standard players, when they go and actually look up a card, typically they look up the standard version and buy that and don't even think to look for other ones. However, if the price gets big enough, if there's a big discrepancy, then these will start to move from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction uh, version uh, for the Hadi Dijin. On to my next one. My number seven is going to be Kaito Bane of Nightmares. So this card was really good in the Demir Aggro, Demir Tempo shell uh, that did place, I believe, two in the top eight. I think two or th yeah, was there two or three of these in the top eight? I know there was a couple demons for Demir, uh, but this one, I've been watching this go from a one of to a two of to a three of, and I've seen list even run four ofs for Kaito because it does have a synergy like really good synergy with any of the one drop flyers. Uh, the bats has great synergy. Even if you have to give back a card, if you can ninjutsu Kaito in, it is just a powerhouse. If you can get it on turn three, it starts to draw you a lot of cards. And I actually have a brew coming up with this one that is playing Nashi. Nashi and Kaito are a match made in heaven. Uh, Kaido, uh, Nashi can find Kaido. There's a lot of unblockable type creatures that are using it with the creature that stuns. Uh, so you can get actually more value after you ninjutsu it back. And this card is sticking around for many, many standards. It's very popular in Commander. And it does have a decent price tag right now. Typically speaking, I don't like to spec on cards that are this high in price. Uh, however, as I mentioned, it just does have a lot of, like, it's in Eureka, the Tiger Shadow. Any deck, any card that's in Eureka, the Tiger Shadow, has a good long-term uh, stability because of how many 
people actually build Eureka. It's still a top 10 uh, commander. Sometimes it even cracks number one it, between that and Atraxa, which is the, the most built commander deck of all time. Uh, so any, any card that is in that deck typically stabilizes off anyway. So it's at its low uh, since its release. So that's something going for Kaito. And as I stated in standard, I've watched it go from a zero of to one of, two of, three of, and even decks that are running four of uh, just because of how powerful uh, this ability was of even stunning down a creature for two two turns the ability to draw cards to have a, a three four out the we saw this this be the key card in a lot of the matchups when the especially the mirrors as kind of would just gain so much value so if we look at the sales the sales is really good 18 per day 16 1624 sold there are a lot of versions of this but as you can see too it has just been selling like crazy in the last few days uh, from the showing. It got a lot of camera time. This is this is what's really got it going. Even if, if it doesn't have as much numbers as another card, if it's a lot of camera time and really showed well uh, at the Worlds, it will lead to people purchasing the card. Alrighty, so on to my number six. My number six is going to be Manifold Mouse. It's another card I've picked before. I still think it's undervalued. Yes, it would have been better to get in at the, like the 20, 30 cents from my last video that I showcased Manifold Mouse. But again, this was one of the key cards in the Mono Red Shell. It Even if you're not pumping anything, the double strike is very significant. It triggers all of the cards that like the, the Ember Heart or the, the other mouse, I can't even think of the, the, the one drop mouse, uh, that whenever they get targeted by an ability, they also get the, the trigger. And what makes this card really, really strong is if you get that it on its offspring, it does double strike and trample on a creature on turn number four. It almost feels like an Embercleave at that point. And it's, it ends up being a twofer. You have to use two removal spells on it. And that was kind of the name of the game with this Pro Tour is there weren't a lot of sweepers going around. Domain did a terrible, terrible showing. One of the worst decks performance-wise uh, at the Pro Tour. And so if people aren't running sweepers, if they're running like the ultimate prices and the, the cut downs and stuff, a card that you have to answer twice on even like a turn four that even makes your just your two ones hit for four, I think is pretty strong with the Manifold Mouse. And it is, again, this is a card that's like, oh, it, it doesn't really fit in these type of shells like the Prowess or the Burn type shells. And now it's a four of. Most red decks are running this as a four of. They're even cutting things like the, the, uh, the Slick Shot for Manifold Mouse just because of the consistency. It almost reminds me of Kameno. It was the same thing with Kameno. Uh, the one drop out of Kamigawa where it didn't like typically fit in like a shell that wanted to go big, but it was just such a consistent card that had to be answered twice that eventually all the decks decided that it was the right slot. And I think that it's going to continue to be this way. And those, any any red deck that says aggro anywhere in it is going to want to, want to run this card. And it was a four of in the deck that, that had the 8-0 performance until the top eight. And unfortunately, they had some pretty crummy matchups and luck in the, in the top eight. But the, it was is definitely one of the breakaway decks of the format. So Manifold Mouse 2 does see play in the Rakdos Prowess, which is the number one deck in Pioneer at the moment. And... Again, it's just very, very powerful card for what it does. And it is having a ton of sales with 43 sold per day. That's why it is, has spiked up a bit. Like I said, you can't get it for the you know 25 cents that at one point you could get it, but you can still get it at an undervalued cost, which I think this could easily crack three, four, five, six, six dollars And it's going to stick around and stand it forever. So it's got a long time of, of play with all those RCQ seasons coming up with all the aggro players and want to you know sleeve the sucker up. Uh, definitely just a dub, a pick right now. On to my number five. My number five is going to be the Doomsday Excruciator. Now, this is the demons decks are trying to figure out what is the right demons to put in the deck. We had the Blood Letter that has already spiked through the roof because of the, the unstoppable uh, zombie combo with it. They ended up being more cute than anything. It had one of the, the more lackluster performances. Um at the pro it did could look good on like day one and day two but day the, the the top eight for sure this version of the doomsday excruciator when this combos so well with restless reef uh the, it justifies its slot there i mean it's six mana for another six six they have to deal with and uh, it wasn't a two of in the pro tour winning deck so again a card that is undervalued that was in the winning deck was in the winning version of the demons I think it just justifies itself to, you know, start to spike up. It's at its lowest right now. And the sales are actually pretty good. They're selling seven per day. But as you can see, it's just sold a ton today. 
like today it has just been purchased like crazy and i think this is the last time to get in under a dollar for the doomsday excruciator like i said this is a card that is very very popular with casuals because anything that mills entire libraries it's I'm sure people are going to find some wombo combos. I'm sure commander players have, have built. How much does this play does it see in commander? So you can actually see, yeah, quite a bit with commander with many, many of these uh, decks that are running this in their 99. I mean, it's just it's just catnip to casuals. And so if a competitive card can also hit a casual, uh, that's exactly where you want to be. And the price point with this one just makes sense. Alrighty, so on it to my number four. My number four is going to be the Unholy Annex Ritual Chamber. This would easily be my number one. It's number, th yeah, I think this is number four. Yes, number four. That's where we're at. This would be higher up in my list if it hadn't already spiked, and it's really, really spiking. So it's now like 15 bucks a pop, um, and you can just see the, the amount purchased within the last few days. You could just go pages and pages and pages. So this was arguably the most powerful card um, of the, the tournament, I mean, man, I'm just scrolling and scrolling. It's You can see it go all the way from 5 to 14 bucks within the last day. I think this card's going to go higher, easily breaking 20 is where I think this one's going to settle. So I think it's actually, you'll have some a little bit of growth with this card. Uh, again, I probably should take it off my list because it, even at that point, I don't know if it's speckable at the moment. However, if you need to pick up copies, now's the time because this was the breakout card. The The top two decks were a Golgari version running the, I believe both of them were running four ofs. Maybe one was running three and one was running four of, of the uh, Unholy Annex Ritual Chamber. It just pairs so well with a bunch of the other demons, gets better with the more and more demons. I'm actually thinking people are going to start messing around with a few other demons. We still have the, the other Demir de demon that that uh, puts a card back on top of your library when it dies, you draw it and they lose life equal to it. Like, like there's a lot of combos with this card that just the, the demons actually make sense at the moment to run with this particular card. It synergizes well with even Shieldred on curve to negate the life loss of drawing the card. So it's, it's not going anywhere. This is just a very, very, very powerful card. Uh, ends up being a lot of times like a three for one. By the time you answer it, if you can answer it, if it's worthwhile even answering it, it's just so much better in Phyrexian Arena. Um, at the, the 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 two life versus one life ends up not being a, a big deal when you get at the end step. That it, this this card just does so much, and yeah, it's here to stay in standard for the foreseeable future. And decks that even don't really even care about running demons, I've I've seen this thrown in the list because you can make a demon with the ritual chamber a six six for five mana so this card is just very very powerful sees a ton of play in pioneer at the moment uh in the mono black mid-range rakdos mid-range and i'm sure we'll see playing commander too when people figure out that it's just like better than frex and arena because you do get that uh draw at the beginning of your end step and who cares about the one life versus two life so yeah very very strong card all right, so on to my number three. My number three are the most duck cards in the world. I'm surprised they're this cheap. The first one being the Restless Cottage. They took second place at the, the Worlds. And it's still, I cannot believe these man lands are still as cheap as they are. I know Wildsville Drain was open like crazy, but these are four ofs in typically most Golgari decks. Just run four ofs because the, the card is so strong. Uh, Restless Cottage is arguably the best one out of the... Uh, lands cycle that was printed and it, being able to to create a food token there's a lot of synergy even with food tokens and exiling cards from a graveyard is also very relevant in this format with a couple of, there were a few sultai reanimation decks in i mean sometimes it's slow to really rely on exiling cards in the graveyard but it does come in handy and that food token does come in handy we've, we've seen the life gain from the food token or utilizing it as some uh other resource it's relevant it's very very relevant Reth's cottage but it's, it's just a 4-4 four, four for a, being able to turn it on for four very very strong very good ability again arguably one of the arguably one of the best lands if not the best land that was printed in this cycle on it and if we actually look at i guess i didn't have the sales uh pulled up for this one i think it's there it is it's just off a little bit so as you can see though same same story it is being purchased like crazy uh, today for the restless cottage as it had a good very good showing in the top eight there were uh, made a top four and uh, the number two with a decks that were running restless cottage the four of i believe so incredibly strong so on to my number one i kind of gave it away there it's going to be the restless reef uh restless reef is so cheap right now for a card that sees four of and i think that was the takeaway is the decks that perform the best were running restless reef there are a few other demir kind of the demir tempo demir aggro shells 
that don't want tap lands. But I, this is kind of the, the route that I went. As I said, I, I made a brew with Kaido and Nashi. And I didn't have any Restless Reefs because I was under the same... Um, oh, I can't have a tap land. I need all of my lands to come into play tapped. If I'm going to consistently tempo, go one, two, three, I can't have a tap land. And then I just realized just how powerful Restless Reef is that it's worthwhile having this card come into play tapped. When our, oftentimes it's the finisher versus the control shells, they control you out and then you're left with your, your land getting through. Um, the death touch is very relevant on this. It's a, again, a four, four for, for, for just animating a four, uh, incredibly, even the milling is, uh, relevant. You can mill yourself, which can come in handy for certain decks, but yeah, it's it has synergy with Jace it has synergy with the demon that I just mentioned earlier, the, the, the doomsday excruciate, uh, excruciator. Um, yeah. And the price is just insane for this one. I can't believe it's a buck. How is this card a dollar? It, I know people are ch chasing mana vaults in Lost Cavern and Ixalan, but still, it, it, I, I cannot for life of me uh, think how cheap this card is. With, I mean, there's still the pre release ones are cheap. The, the, this, Stephen, even saying this one is like under a buck. Uh, you can still find copies. And a four of in the Pro Tour winning deck, it's got to go up. And as you can see, it is being sold like crazy and more is to come. I think these are the ones that are all also overlooked. So you can see, oh, well, this card performs so well, this, you know, unholy holy annex and they get all uh, bought up. And you, you got to realize though, Restless Reef is seeing, I mean, Golgari, of course, is then running the unholy annex and other decks are running it as well. But the Demir decks, people that are going to just copy pasta, the Demir deck, they're going to need four copies of this one. And I think that they buy all the other cards and they get to the mana base and like, oh, okay, um, now we'll buy the lands. And so it's going to be a little bit of lag when Restless Reef gets purchased, but it's going to be purchased regardless. And there aren't too many copies left, like 855 with the amount being sold per day. It's going to strip this, this uh, 855 quite quickly. Like in three months, there were 994 copies of these sold. Yes, more will go on listing. It's, this is never a good... I, I always laugh when there are some other YouTubers that show this and say, hey, this is going to be you know bought up in this amount of days. Well, that doesn't take into account for people that are listing them. But it's this is a very good sign for this card of being stripped out from its supply very, very quickly with being in the Pro Tour winning deck. This one's just the duh of a duh card. I probably should have put this as number one. Uh, however, I think the number one card is just the biggest duh card of all time. And this is going to be Archfiend of the Dross. It sees play in Pioneer. It's been seeing play in Pioneer for a long time. And it recently actually was the cheapest it's been for quite some time at 70 cents. It has spiked up like crazy. You need to get in now if you're going to get in because it is spiking. It's all the way up. Some have sold... For bucks seventy nine, some have sold all the way from like three to four bucks, and it is just being purchased like crazy. So I think that the question was answered of which one's better: the blood bloodletter archfiend of, of the dross. Archfiend the dross seems to be the, the clear winner uh, for which demon four drop do you run? And I again, I think that most of the shells are going to go away from the the uh, kind of wombo combo bloodletter with the 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 unstoppable slasher and go into the more stable approach of just slamming an Archfiend of the Dross. And if your opponent doesn't answer the Archfiend of the Dross, then they're going to die quickly. And it can, oftentimes it dishes off like eight damage if it gets in for a turn because you're going to be killing a blocker. And then you can get in for the six or or anything else that dies at that point is going to drain the, the opponent, which is very relevant. And it's, it's, again, it's very hard to justify any shell right now in black that isn't curving with Unholy Annex into Archfiend of the Dross. It's just incredibly powerful. It's pushing even Shieldred out uh, of that slot. And uh, Pioneer's playing it. There's, yeah, this card just does everything you want it to do at the moment. It doesn't have like travel or anything, but I think this the key second ability or third, uh, yeah, second ability of whenever Christian Bonnet Control dies, Control loses two life, is also very relevant in a, a you know board state where I mean, it makes chump blocking at least still get in for some damage. And so, yeah, you can lose the game, but if it has no oil counters on it, I wonder if people are going to start running the card that removes counters. But, yeah. Anyway, that is my top 10 list of cards that I think are going to go up. If you like this type of content, head over to my Rogue Market channel where I'm going to do a lot of top 10 lists in the next coming week as well as bring back the Daily Delve where we try to pick one card per day that I think is going to go up. Hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Deck Builder for Market Monday. 
on a Sunday. Thanks for watching.